Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Mukesh and we are here to morning on a Sunday morning today. Thank you all for attending it. Thank you for being the trustable five people from the 21 million system. <laughs> you will not forget your faces. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to look at what you can read because I'm not the person who generally does this, so please don't mind. Uh, MailChimp, the first slide is our sponsor, MailChimp. They enable us, help us reach a lot of people. We reached 21 people, but I showed up. Thank you. Uh, these are the number of events that we've done in the past, multiple speakers, some amazing ones, including the ones that we have today, which is okay. Before that, we have uh, some of our partners. One partner who's not mentioned today is also Simran, who got us some fantastic uh, sandwiches. Looks great. We have Ashutas. They've given us this beautiful space. Ninja Amrita, we have breakfast. Some of you have had it. You can also have it after the event. If you want seconds also, you can take because 21 people. Perfect candy. Generally, you would have been treated for perfect candy, but we are out of season. Next event, you come, we give you two. <laughs> so, the theme generally is given to us by one of the chapters from across the, across the world. The theme that we have now is Ethos. How many of you know what Ethos stands for? Ethos is. If you don't know what is, our speaker is here. <laughs> that is, that is our segue to the speaker, that is Vanessa. Brilliant picture. Uh, costume designer, stylist, and model. Part time model is what she has, officially models. And uh, anything more than this, if I say about her, I'd be doing an injustice to her. So I think I'm going to just let her speak about herself. Uh, we ranked all those. That's amazing. I think that's. Yeah. yeah. It's good. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm going to have fun. I'm, I'm excited about this talk. I'm just. You wish, okay? Okay. I'm a little shy at home, but I will warm up. This is my Sunday morning mass, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really just spoke like my pastor at church. Hi guys. So today we are going to talk about, we are going to discuss chapter 7. That's how it's called. Uh, hi. The pastor is that funny. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Subject to my discussion. But uh, thank you so much for coming. But uh, I will do. Uh, is everyone comfortable in Tamil? Yeah? 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 No. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sudden yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really scared of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start doing that. So, first of all, I want to thank these guys. Thank Sudarshan because he reached out to me and he said, uh, Let's do. Can you please talk? This thing will be interesting. Uh, I love talking on all basis, but uh, this is so thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I think uh, okay. So <laughs> so ethos. Uh, I don't know what uh, you all know about ethos or what. Do you guys have any idea about ethos? I know he asked. Are we a shy group? So we need five minutes to warm up to say something because I will talk and I will just keep talking and I will probably say dad jokes and uncle jokes and tell why did I talk to see this girl. But uh, yeah, so ethos is something that's just character. In my mind, how I process ethos is just something that's very characteristic to a particular. It could be anything. It could be you. It could be your job. It could be your community. It could be your set of people. Your house. Like my uncle decided to give me a. My uncle and my dad decided to talk to me about ethos two days back and they discussed ethos in my family. So it's just that, and I just thought maybe I could uh, give an insight into how uh, my job functions. Uh, so I'm a costume designer primarily, and I also do styling because it comes hand in hand. They are two different things. I know people tend to think they're the same thing, but they're two different things. Um, so, first, I work for films, ads. For the shoots, I've been working in the industry for the last eight years. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. So I just thought today maybe I can tell you about what I do. Because I really love what I do. Um, so typically in any 
costume designing, uh, the process of any costume designer usually goes through these phases. Uh, it's, you first have a meeting, I mean it's, it's how they approach you, so somebody talks to you and then they tell you, you know, they, you start getting the word going, you talk to each other, you figure out if the project works for you and then we discuss budgets because nothing happens without them. And then of course we do sourcing, we have to test and we will shoot. And of course the end product, uh, you know, comes through in video or photos or however that is. So I just want to go ahead and start telling you anything about that. See, see you got you got it all. I like it. It's nice. It's good. <laughs> So the first thing, ideally, uh, I'm going to tell you the process, and then I, I thought maybe you guys could also help me think about, I mean, like think about the ethos of the job. I have something in mind, but I would also like to know what you're doing. So the first is a meeting on an approach, which is kind of like the first day. I'm not kidding. It's uh, it's always somebody calling up and be like, hey, so I have this job. Would you like to have a meeting? We just discuss it, and then we meet up. Most of the time, when you see them, you just be like, oh, this is not going to work. It's it's as simple as that. It's really like a first date. Just meet someone you like. Once out. But sometimes then you just get to meet this person as either the vibe the person gives across. In weird ways, yeah, maybe it's the ethos of that person also. Like when you meet the person, you know if this project will work. You know if the person will work. Some people choose uh, projects for the project. Some people choose it for the people. Some people choose it for the money. It can be whatever it is. But that is where that first meeting really determines a lot of things because you know if it fits or it doesn't. Um, so invariably they call us up and they're like, so this production house is doing this project or we have this particular actor for this event, for this photo shoot, this brand, all the basic details and then you see if it works, like you be like okay, so this is your idea, right, let me think about it and let me get back. And then the first thing we do is we pitch a budget, like we say I would charge this much uh, for these many days of shoot or for this duration of work period and does that work for you. Uh, this is not something I think in the beginning I used to do very well because for me it was like oh I'm doing my job and then the money will just come but you don't realize that this is one of the most difficult conversations you have and uh, this may sound also by the way when I'm going on and talking about the job it may sound like every other corporate job it may sound like every other thing but I think that is what I also want to emphasize because this job in everybody sees it from the outside you feel like oh I'm not costume designing so cool you're just like testing somebody up people think I just do shopping for a living I am able to be <laughs> It's not just that. It, it is a lot more. Like, I don't think people really see it from the outside. Like, when I went to NIFT, everybody was like, oh my god, I'm just so famous. That's all, you know, I'm just passionate all the time. Maybe you're just partying all the time. But uh, there were three teachers in my college, and he knows how we sometimes, how I see my seniors show up, like the girls just show up in their home, you know, house clothes to be like, okay, I need to get this presentation through. I need to submit my assignment and then go home. So it is just as. Uh, it can be just as boring and very segmented and as corporate as you wouldn't imagine it to be. So that happens and then we can speak budgets and that goes through. And then if all things come through, as in the basic sense of budgets and you know you buy with that person, they give you a brief. So for any project, so for this particular, to kind of get you guys to understand for one particular project, I did this music video with uh, Sean Rodden and Think Music uh, two years ago. It was called Hit Teacher. Uh, so that I thought I go through. That's okay. You want to? No, I don't think you need to. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. So I just thought I'd run you through the what I did for the music video, so it's easier to kind of understand how we do the job. Uh, so first we get a brief. So you, it's usually the director who speaks to you and tells you, you know what, this is the idea we have. So in this case what happened, usually you're given a script. If it's a movie, if it's a web series, you're given a script and say, read the script. Or they'll give you a one line, which is just one one line for the whole thing. Or they'll give you a synopsis and say, read it, see what you're vibing with and see if you can kind of pitch in also. What do you think, what are your views. It's a brainstorming session, like how you start any creative process. So here what happens is for this project, it was a different experience for me because for the first time I was doing a music video so they sent me the song. They didn't give me a script. They just said listen to the song. And it's kind of cool to listen to a song when it's not released but nobody else has heard it except the music director, you know. Because music is a whole different vibe for all of us, right? So I just heard it and I was like, this is nice. It's kind of like a, it's a really fun, groovy thing. 
and then I spoke to him and asked him, do you guys have something specific in mind? So they said, we've already created a tech where we have some ideas of what we want to shoot, uh, how we want to do it, with whom we're doing, where we're doing, and we just thought maybe you should uh, listen to the song and if you can give us some inputs, go ahead. I really like working with people like that, where they give you that liberty. They're not too, they know what they want, but they're not too stringent saying, I want only that. You know, they're paying you for a reason, they hire you for a reason. So then I got to brave and uh, so I listened to the song and then you interpret it a certain way because the thing about creativity, creative jobs is there's no right answer. I think that's the, that's something I learned going to a creative school, uh, you know, a design school where you just don't have a right answer, which is difficult because uh, if you're doing engineering, you're doing anything, right? You know that this is the right answer. This cannot, this this cannot be an answer. You cannot give this medicine to somebody. You cannot put that angle or the I don't know something related to man. <laughs> but for so here, like here, I think the one thing I learned in college is I could have an interpretation of something, and my classmates could have an interpretation of the same thing, and it could be so different from each other yet it will work because it's just what's in your mind, you know. And finding a balance in a place like that is very difficult. People think, oh, but there's so many ideas. It's not that easy. Because uh, that's when your the power play comes into, you know, action and then somebody wants something, somebody wants So who's the better person to decide? Who takes the call? So all those kind of clashes happen. So I think that when they give you the brief, trying to, apart from vibing with that person normally, I think trying to come together for a particular for that project, like your bigger picture is the project. So whether you like the person, whether you don't, whether your ideas clash with theirs, trying to find that middle ground really helps. Uh, so for this project, this, these are the images I received, saying they were going to create setups like this. Like we actually they did a, they did different versions of this. So they had a set like this. They wanted to do shadow play like that, and they, those are the colors. So the colors they gave me was can we stick like a set of colors like that and they wanted to do national sequence. They actually recreated a set like this. But they had some people that were all of the <laughs> Yeah, they did. It was kind of fun. So this is what they did. And I think in this particular stage, understanding their vision and how far they wanted to go creatively really matters. I think that was that's the main thing about a brief. A brief given to you is them sharing their vision and then giving you something that is so personal to them because their mind is the most personal it gets and how you find a way to accommodate your aesthetics into that is the brief right? the brief stage it's a, it's a nice stage to be in and uh, yeah yeah that is what they give so in the beginning they will so the thing is some uh, for ads and all when it towards clients they will give you a full deck Say this is the kind of art I'm looking at, this is the kind of costume I'm looking at, this is the kind of colors, this is the kind of mood I want, they give all of it. But when you're doing individual projects, the director will tell you that now you can path and again, in the reference picture why don't you give the picture to me? But the client on the other hand for ads, I received I received costume idea there over here, so no, so I don't have to work on this. Like y'all will give me the idea. Okay, fine, cool, one less job for me. But for this and all, I had to give them saying, so I had to be like, okay, can we try this? Can we do that? I feel like we should try this time. Um, so then, once we're done with that, of course, budget uh, approvals. Typical, Anna runs Rupa That's what happens. That, that happens. I'm not even kidding. It happens so often, ever so often. It is, uh, it's not even funny at this point. But uh, I think like every other thing, no, you have to get money is very important. And it's not something I think I knew in the beginning or I even understood in the beginning. But uh, somehow this is this is one this is something I had to just see. Like I don't think it really matters when I'm talking about the creative process. But I think I like to put this across for people to understand that it really flows. It's as practical and real as it gets. Um, so yes, design influence. Now there's, that's where I put my dad joke and I said, Kurut the gas kids, pretty good job. <laughs> yes! People got it. Yes, yes, yes. Did you all get it too? Please guys, tell me you understood this. Yes. <laughs> so, um, this is where I think. Guys, <laughs> 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 I was very delirious when I wrote this, when I read this new video that day. So, 
So I was just like, take it all out. It's just like. So, <laughs> so the design inputs is the idea. So in this project, I was lucky enough to give whatever I could. I didn't have anybody give me an idea first where I had to stick around. So I knew Sean. I mean, I didn't know him personally, but I'd spoken to him on the phone because of the project. And I love Sean. That's something that's very personal. Like, I, I, a lot of the songs really um, have kind of set my mood on many days, personally. So being able to give to that really helped. So I gave it all I had. And I listened to the song. I know how Sean is as a person. You know, put all of it together. And I could give whatever I could give from my end. Which I think really helps because um, I think, I mean, like I'm, what I'm trying to say is when someone gives you a brief and you work around it, uh, with their references in mind, that is one thing. But being uh, able to work with complete creative freedom is nice because it's okay to be wrong. Because you don't have a specific set saying you could, if you go in this direction, maybe you'll, you'll be right. But when you go completely, you'll be like, okay, this is wrong, let's go for another thing. So that's when we discuss a lot of ideas. So during this process, what I do is, what we, any of us usually do is, we send across references, which is most of the time doing like every other Wikipedia problem, presentation from college or school. So we go through a lot of Pinterest, Google, and sometimes we look through images we have, like if we're you're, if you're doing a period project, uh, we go through old photos of when my parents, you know, my, my grandparents, and you pull out things. So if I feel like I have, so it's, uh, when I heard the song, it was very fun and the only person I could think of at that point for like a reference was Bruno Mars. I don't know why, just, it just, sometimes it just hits you. So I had like a Bruno Mars thing happening and so I would take, I don't know how many pictures I could put in. And I was like, can we try this? Can we just do a very fun, you know, where, because that was the kind of, I think choreography also they had in mind. They had like, Four five dancers with him. So I said, why can't we try like a nice fun thing? Because Sean has always been known as that really calm person who comes to sing, so just chill and he goes. So let's just try and revamp the person also because it's his song. So then I usually put together, we all put together a bunch of pictures and uh, and this is also setting the mood for the rest of the thing. So apart from so in, when you're setting the idea for a particular project. It is individual characters, which you give characters, and then you also do background. Um, and a lot of times people tend to think background can I particular mode. Setting a mood for something is um, is extremely important. And I think this is something quite recently me and a colleague of mine were discussing last Sunday when the last episode of House of Dragon came out. And in the last scene, there's just this passing action that happens in the diagram. People are moving. But it's so straight and uh, my colleague and I were discussing about how the one, like he was telling about how when you work with money, sir, you know that even those small things have to make sense. Like you understand why that man tells you, but it doesn't look real. Passing that in, I think most people think. But setting that makes it more believable, makes it more real. And at the end of the day, when you're creating art like this, it's not just about, it, it's about how it reaches somebody, right? It's not just about getting it to them. It's about how they perceive it. So the more they are able to take it inside and feel like it's as real as it gets, it helps. So then we also set an idea for the background saying, let's do this. Let's kind of like bring in our vibe. So we overall select one pictures or references or say, this is the mood. Can we go with this mood? Uh, so then we brainstorm, the director will give you inputs, the actor will give you inputs and all of that. And of course you will have to discuss, sometimes they will give you options and then that's when again the budget comes in when you say you can't push that much because it's important that we stick to a certain amount because the production fails. And uh, yeah, it's really So that is when the next thing is we got so we start sourcing. Now this is when I told you everybody thinks oh she just shops. You think shopping is fun. I'm sure a lot of y'all go shopping. It is, oh, maybe we go to the weekend. This is go to Phoenix. I do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it may be, it may, it may sound nice that I'm always at Phoenix. Phoenix day, every shopkeeper knows me. At this point, if I walk into the store, probably they even think it's a headache because I'm going to buy so many things for them. And then sort of things like, okay, we'll do this, can we do that? 
Um, so when we start shopping, uh, based on our budgets, we choose places. It varies, and uh, so there are two types of things. One is when we are shopping, we send pictures to the director. Like if it's a smaller project, you know, you can kind of create a WhatsApp group and just send pictures and say, "Do you guys think this looks nice? Do you like, you know, what do you think of it?" Um, but sometimes what happens is you can't do that. Like when you're working on a big scale film, so you end up trying. You buy a lot of things, and then you do trials on an actor. So I'll show you how sourcing usually goes. Um, when we buy things, this is how it works. So we categorize it into we buy a bunch of like a varied set of items, and we also keep a stable set of clothes. Like you always, it's always safe, you know. It's always good to have a safety belt, whether black, you know, white, you know, blue, your normal stuff. And then we also cater to specific scene. Like we had this one scene where you know you're supposed to be wearing these really funky boxers, really funny looking funky boxers. We got like this cartoon prints, and there is one thing where he is a foreigner. So when you dis when they discuss the script with me, it's like it would, I can go creative. Um, creatively for the whole project, but for the whole music video, but there are one or two scenes that are specific. He has to be in a formal. He has to be in a formal. He has to be in something that is there. So you clear that out first, and then you go to that. Like it's. Um, I think one thing that's very important in any creative job or this particular job, I think, has is is a certain amount of planning. It may because we are a very chaotic environment. We are an extremely chaotic environment. Uh, because no matter how much we plan and how ready we are, somehow on the day of shoot when you go there, that one button will pop, and that you know that the guy would have he would have done the art, but suddenly that that man would have that painting will fall. Aparokan the aniyar, you know that's when the director will have but my shot is ready. The choreographer won't have the time. The dancers will come some day, maybe you know, you know uh, or somebody would have would have measurement issues, and you'll have so many things that are happening. So. You have to plan and be ready for anything that could possibly go wrong. So a certain amount of discipline in terms of these are my priorities, these are my to-do lists. Like I forgot to take my book, but I have this book where you know every day in the morning I write, jot down a whole list of things I have to do first thing. Then at work, and in work it's another priority. At which for which office or which project. So in in while working on a particular project, I think it's always good to. Split like at least how I work is I split my staples. Like I know for a fact that this scene has to have this. I will get it out of the way, so it doesn't bother me later. And then I can do the rest of the jugad work, you know, as and when it comes. And the same thing for women. Like you know, so I'm just so this I'm showing you a bunch of things because I realize that I can talk, but it's it's always nicer to have visual aids, right? So this because I show you the video at the end. So if whatever you're seeing now, you'll be able to see it. So you'll be able to realize how it was put from where to where. And this was all taken in the house. Like I, I did the shopping, and then my assistant came over, and then we just like put them onto things, and we we started taking pictures. And I didn't make this presentation. Like I just keep sending it to the director. I keep like I created a group, and I'm sending it saying, "This is what I'm planning. Do you not like something? Do you like something? Like and this is the amount of like." Usually, this is these are like ten talks, right? These are the only pictures I took from my phone, but I would have like for the presentation. But I would have otherwise had like twenty, thirty talks for like six scenes. And I also have to manage not buying all of it and just throwing them. Like I have to manage where can I return some? Can I like exchange some? Will I find a way to repurpose it? Will the production use it somewhere else? So that kind of goes together apart from the creative process. Um, yeah. So again, the whole staples and you know all this happens, and you always keep like a bunch of toys. So the one thing about this job, I think, when we're sourcing, is trying to stick to that color palette, but also giving variety. So if they say let's stick to yellows, blues, and reds, I can't just do yellows, blues, and reds. I have to find lighter options. I can add a black or a gray, which is something that neutralizes that. Some denim because it's a blue, but it's a different blue. And sometimes I got into trouble here because usually when you're shooting, where you have to do CG, they put a green mat. Mm -hmm. So I avoided everything green. But what color did they put for the mat? Blue. 
Yeah, so then we went to go back and my character is went for this blue, the jeans are blue. Like, what was supposed to do? Change the jeans. But then of course it kind of you kind of know how to balance it then. So you try and figure out something. See, if you see all of this, they're on one color code. But you will have to give that variety here. And this was for background. So this is just a few things that I bought for the models. Uh, and we did ask some things to be brought by the balls also. The dancers came also said, guys, can you bring something? They brought some stuff. So then that way you avoid the amount of you, you avoid the amount of expenditure that goes through, which helps production. And it's it's not just you. As much as it's your department and yes, you want to give your best and all of that, it's not just you. You cater to a lot of people, you need to accommodate to a lot of people. It's everybody's hard work that comes into one particular outlook. Um, so then we have the test that we did. I'm enjoying this. Because before we started, you know, we see it's so cool. You press right to go back to yes. <laughs> I'm enjoying this one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so look this and fit it. Um, so this is what we did. So for this project, I was lucky enough to have Sean come shopping with me. Which was really like one thing it was fun. It was also very easy. Uh, I called Eka, I work with Eka, so Eka Lakani, I called her say that Aditi goes shopping. So it is so easy. I mean, yes, of course it is difficult. Maybe sometimes you take Aditi or Aditi everywhere you go shop. But Aditi makes your life easy because she will spend that one, two days with you, come with you, get everything sorted with you. So you know your fittings, you know your colors, you have pictures on the person and not just on a hangout for your director to kind of visualize. Because you may be able to visualize your job, but somebody that's gone. So I would say, hey, this talk will look good on him or her. My director might not be able to see it. That is a risk I have to take on the day of the shoot, which is very risky because if nobody likes it, then what am I going to do? You know? So it's always good to have fittings and trials because these are the kind of things we try on. We know that if we have that, if we have something layered over him, it looks cooler and then he looks cleaner. And there are some t shirts we have to lay over and stuff like that. And it was really helpful to have him around, but then he went for it. And then of course, we did trials on the female lead on the day of the shoot, which she was not available, which is not from here. And like if you see, this the shoot on the right is actually really well fit. It's short, it doesn't fit her right, it's not sitting well on her. Uh, but the reason I put it is to show that this is why it is basically problem solving, right? It's in advance. You just know that it's there, you can fix it, you don't have to deal with it on the day of the shoot. We still dealt with it on the day of the shoot. But, it is just, it really helps. It's a process, it's very organized. And the more organized you are, it just helps you do better. And yes, of course, shoot day. So, shoot day is fun. I, so what we do is first in the morning, we start, like, I think if we, if 9 o'clock is your first shot, we are invariably there about 2 hours earlier, or like 7. And then we start, we have our Arnas coming. It's a big team. So, it, um, I don't think people also understand how big a team can get. But for a small, for a music video like this, I had me, I had my assistant. And I had two Annas who came. One tailor and one Anna usually to eye on and like get the clothes ready. So we, in the morning when you come at 7, you get everything ready. Your respect to scene. I mean, if you know what they're wearing for what scene, great, you can get that ready. But the rest of it also, when, you, when you're working on ads or something like this, you get everything ready. And then you start making sets according to maybe for this team we can pair them up like this we can pair them up like that because uh, yeah sure uh, your DOP which your cinematographer will pick colors because he knows what he's trying to create so he will tell you I like this color scheme the director will say we can go cool they can also pick but it is your job right to give them something that they can take a call on so all this happens in the morning approvals confirmations and then you will see and then, I don't know, these are just pictures I took from shoot. It's a really fun thing. Like, when I show you the video, I think you kind of see all of this. And uh, it's nice, it's nice because I think um, every day is different. Every shoot is different. Every scene we set also is different. And it's very really nice to see all that. Uh, and I think this shoot is a place where it's not just your creativity, but it's also everybody's that comes into play. And there's so much you learn. There's so much you learn, there's so much you see through. And uh, yeah, that's shoot. And the next is my handover. Now this is the boring part. Now shoot is over, everybody says start up, I go home and then I sit and do mock-ups. 
and we hand over the clothes that we buy. So anything, a lot. I think most of the people I meet, I think the first question they ask me invariably is, "What do you do with the clothes after shoot? <laughs> Where does it go?" So it usually goes to the production because it's not my sort of thing. They will just they they the cookies they sort of thing. So they take it and it's um, repurposed. Good uh, smart productions will repurpose repurpose it for other. Uh, other projects, not on their teams, but like background. So they try to make use of it the best they can. In Bombay, I know some productions sell. It. They do like a thrift second sale thing, which also works. It's just to like you know kind of get it away instead of stocking up. So we hand over everything we buy. Uh, we don't keep anything with us. And if if there's something that I really like that I want to take off their hands, then I pay them to move that bill and send it. But otherwise, you. Give me. That's something we do. Maybe even we do sometimes. We really like something to kind of um, buffer the amount of things that's just going to the good of. If you are going to use something, or sometimes the actors, if they like something, they will get it off them. Stuff like that. But usually we just hand over everything, and we do move accounts. And accounts, of course, they give me a lot of money that I need to give all accounts. For. So it's just as. So it's not just the creative side. Like the reason why I said budgets and I said meetings and I'm even saying accounts is because it's. Um, yeah, it's an elaborate process because you're responsible for something. I, I I don't know how old some of you are, but I don't know. But I think the older you get, you realize that you know you have bills to pay. You need to like handle a lot of things. Buying your monthly groceries or just anything is just it's a lot. This is kind of similar to that because this is not even your money. It is somebody else's money that you are accounting for. And I remember days when I've gone back and given nine rupees in coins or saying rich girl. They be like, "Oh, go through all that, they'll be there." I said, "Rich girl, it's not my money, and it matters because they will have audits. They have, they have to account for. Like uh, a company as big as Nick Music has so many projects they're doing. They have a lot of money, so if you need to, Elaku, you have to give accounts, and you, so they trust me to be able to give them solid accounts that they can just buy. You know, so we account for everything, like what we spend, what." Has come to us the balance. How do you get all the things and all that? So that is the problem. And oh, the output. Yes, very often the old old but the really so it's very true. <laughs> In my case, I have somehow ended up working on projects that take forever to either get done or release. Uh, but it's always worth it. I will show you the output when I finish this. But thank you. And there is a this mandatory slide because uh, when have we ever done? <laughs> A presentation is not a thing. Family project. Yes, <laughs> because who breaks tradition? Then a family project. Family project is like this. That is something. But yes, now I want you to see the video. If you don't mind, if you'd like to see.
is being able to give life to your imagination and otherwise uh, and otherwise simple fun you know uh, just something that's in your imagination but you can you can actually visually represent it to stay longer like you know when you were kids they used to say no you know when padikirana irukke nee edhedhe adhu paaka paaka unakku innum mande irukku nu solvaanga so and the mandri i think because it's like that i mean i loved harry potter when i was growing up then i read it and i had this vision in my head and then i saw it and now it stays longer there are things i might have changed or i may not but it stays longer The first time I read Pony is over, and I read it in some time. I read all five books. Um, like when they say power of them and all of that, and you read so many things, and you're like, "Wow, this is so beautiful!" You know, you just you picture a whole universe, but it's just in your head. Uh, but when I when I got to be a part of the film, I got to do it. There is a certain visual you are creating, but it's not only your visual. The sense it is something that bonds. Two, three people. Like, but if I read Pony Silver and if Bhupati read Pony Silver, we would have probably had different ideas. You know, I would have seen Pooja really a certain way. You would have seen Pooja really a certain way. Uh, and both our imaginations will be our own imaginations for ourselves for the rest of our lives. But when we see a movie like Pony Silver now and we actually see it, both of us can. We also have a common bond of Pooja. Really. He can have his own version. I can have my own version. But now both of us have a common version as well. And I think being able to give life to an imaginative figure or character or to an imaginative person is something that I really cherish doing, and I feel that is the ethos of this job because it gives a certain life to something that you can't see.